My grandfather would say it, and I can't say it in Italian, but uh, in America, the streets are paved of gold, but you gotta bend down to pick it up. like in a super tight-knit family. We still to this day do like our family vacations all together every year. We all didn't want ordinary jobs, just sitting at a desk. We had so many different creative ideas. We used to talk all the time, sitting around a fire, like what if we could hire all of our family and friends? What if we could all work in this awesome shop and it's enjoyable to come to work every day? flexibility and the excitement and the uncertainty that comes with all of it. They talked about that junior, senior year of high school. My wife was definitely the most supportive person. She always wanted us to have side jobs, always wanted us to like dabble in different things to find out what our passion was. All of us wanted to be entrepreneurs, but I don't think any of us actually thought it would happen. My brother had graduated and gotten like a really good job at Anscombe. I worked there as a civilian engineer for about three years. I just could not wrap my head around like this whole nine to six, you know, hour lunch break. He was telling me that he was thinking of starting his own business. When we started dating was when he quit his job and was like, I'm gonna do my own thing. And I was like, okay, well, if I don't leave you now, then I guess I'm in it for the long haul. The first three years of the business, it was just my brother and I, and we were working in this tiny little basement shop. Having a successful job that pays you a check every week, them giving that up and starting this, you worry about them having a roof over their heads, being able to pay their bills, and they did not want it to ever spoil their relationship with each other. It's wicked hard and it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, they definitely have a passion. I mean, I'll say they're so passionate that you hear fights sometime where they're screaming at each other. We try to let one person talk at a time, but we're Italian, so we all kind of butt in and it doesn't really always work. We're not just punching a clock. Our livelihood depends on this product and how well it's designed and how well it's made. Starting a new business, you don't get a lot of respect right out of the gate. You need that support network. A lot of places aren't willing to give it to you until you've been in business for five years. Small businesses for bigger banks are not considered because the dollar amount is not there. They're working just as hard. They're probably working harder. Our first call was to the credit union. Michelle was the first person that I got to talk to. You know, when my phone rings, I answer it. To be able to talk with somebody that actually can answer your questions. That's what we needed to get started at. We, we had really no idea of how to start a business, how to manage the money and everything like that. You don't realize everything that's going to be thrown at you and which direction, you know, you're going to get pulled in. Whether it's for equipment or commercial real estate, it was great to have somebody to kind of talk to, talk things through. That allowed us to grow to the point that we then were able to start hiring people. We started really fine-tuning our craft, expanding our product line, listening to our customers and figuring out what they wanted. Within a few months of hiring, my best friend from high school and then my sister and my dad, we were in this much bigger space and we had expanded into new markets. It was fun because now our conversations with Michelle got to transition less towards like how are we going to get through this to more like okay now how are we going to grow this. I mean my entire family is perfectionist so anything that we come out with it's just something that like has to either like fix something or solve something or be better than than everything else. It's got to be something that you would want and like and continue to use yourself. So we really try to focus on making a quality product that looks good too. Wallets kept falling apart on me so I came up with this idea for a wallet made of a single piece of leather and no thread stitching. We used solid brass rivets. The stitching doesn't always look good. It's frayed, it's ripping, that kind of thing. So when I say, oh, I've had this for five years, and they're like, what, it looks brand new. 
there's a reason American Made has such strong marketability. It, it really does come down to quality. The leather is full grain, veg tanned leather, so it has that like real natural, rich look and feel to it. We all have different strengths that contribute to American Benchcraft. Like Leah started doing silversmithing. I really want to incorporate his leather cup bracelets or their leather totes and include a turquoise pendant on it. Nobody's gonna have the same like connection to your business that your family does. Like I'm trying not to sound cliche here, but like I love coming into work every day. Like Mondays are my favorite day, Fridays are my least favorite day. We also know what our limitations are and Black Friday is probably the busiest retail day of the year but none of us want to work the day after Thanksgiving, so we're closed that day. Oh, I think it's awesome that it started out with the two brothers, and now it's grown to include dad that's retired that I just saw in the shop. That's awesome, you know? Being like a business owner, I mean, all the money that we like make for this company, we're making that for ourselves. It's all about helping the business, and when there isn't a product, Phil and I like to create it. It doesn't feel like we're just getting put into some cookie cutter model. We're actually being heard. It makes it seem like there's no ceiling to what we can accomplish. American Benchcraft. Founded by my brothers. Handcrafted in the good old USA. We are proud to be a Hanska member. Do more. Do more. Do a lot more. Do more. With your money. With our money.